I recently became familiar with making documents and PDFs and eBooks accessible. And so I wanted to share this with you as quickly as possible. I'm gonna make this quick. So this is gonna be how to make PDFs created in Google Docs, Canva, and Microsoft Word, how to make those accessible using Adobe Acrobat. So before we get started, if you have an interest in learning about the WCAG standards and especially how to apply them in an articulate storyline course, then you need to check out the description below. I have a Udemy class all for that. Also linked below is a Canva link so you can view the content I'm gonna present in this video. You can view it like in an ebook format. And if you wanna buy the ebook so you can own it and access it at any time, then go to my Etsy store also in the description. Let's get started. So we're gonna just start with the best practices first. This is something you should do no matter where you're building, okay? Number one, use headings so screen readers can browse the main points of your document in the same way that a sighted person can scan the, the bolded paragraph topics. It's the same thing. Two, don't use symbols as bullets, okay? Use the actual bullet feature in these programs so that the screen reader can recognize and announce that they are reading items from a list. I mean, it will say list of five items and then it'll read the five items and it'll say done with list. Actually, it says out of list, but I mean, it, it tells that the list is over. That's helpful. Number three, always explain what a button or a link will do. So for example, you might say like, select the link below to go to my Etsy store or visit the Canva document for more details on accessibility. It clearly states what it is and what's gonna happen. You know, a website's gonna open, a document's gonna download, a video's gonna start. You gotta tell them what's gonna happen. Number four, don't place text over patterns or images. Be sure there's a significant color contrast between the font and the background. Left justify those large chunks of text instead of the center justification. Make all your text size 16 or larger. I know that one's kind of hard to do. Uh, when you can do it, do it. All of these features improve the readability for all learners, not just those with low vision and dyslexia. Number five, add headers to your tables in that very first row. And that way screen reader users and sighted users, I mean anyone for that matter, can understand the information that's in the table. Number six, add alt text to images and never include the phrase image of or graphic of. Just simply state what's happening. So for example, you would just say, a brown dog is jumping to catch a Frisbee. Number seven, mark decorative items as decorative or background or artifacts. Different programs are gonna call this different things. But basically, you don't want screen readers saying things like a line, black circle, dotted pattern. Those things don't add any value to the content. It's just a waste of time. It's very, very annoying. Number eight, don't use colors to convey meaning. Okay, so for example, let's look at this graph. If you have a graph and it's color coded, then you should also include labels and details about what is being shown. So for example, here, I should include additional information about the areas and, and what those areas mean. Okay, so here we are in Google Docs. Here's how you mark a heading. You highlight and then you choose here. So you're always gonna start with a heading one, although there's actually no like official convention for how headings work, but in general, it should start with the largest and then you move to the smallest. I mean, it, it should make organizational sense. So that's gonna be heading one and then all of these little sub headings are gonna be heading two. And then if I had sub points beyond that, I would label those as heading three and so on. So let me just go ahead and do that. Up here, you have your bullet option and your number option. Remember, you wanna use those. You don't want to number or bullet on your own. So to add alt text, you right click, choose alt text, and then you type in the description. And then finally, a lot of people wonder about this accessibility tab. This is actually for you as a user. So this has um, shortcuts and different things that you can, different features you can turn on and off to help you have a more accessible experience. These are not features for your document. So now here I am in Microsoft Word. It's a very similar thing. You highlight your text and then up here under the home tab, you choose which heading level you want. So we'll go with heading one and then heading two and heading two. Here is your bullet and list options here. 
And then to add alt text to an image, you right click and you choose view alt text. And then you simply write in your alt text. You can gener have it generated for you or you can mark it as decorative. Now, the nice thing about Microsoft Word is that you have an additional feature and it's called the review. And so when you're done, you can go and you can check the accessibility of the document. And basically, it's gonna pull up this panel here of any errors it's found. And it says that uh, picture one either needs the alt text or it needs to be marked as decorative. And so it's just kind of like that little reminder of different things you need to take care of before your document is accessible. So I actually use Canva to create most of my documents and eBooks, and it's a little more complicated here because I can't mark blocks of text as, he as headings. And so that's a problem, uh, but I do have the, the list options here and you just click them to go between them, right? To go between the bullets and the list. And to add alt text, it's actually pretty easy as well. You right click, go to alternative text, and then you either add your text and or mark it as decorative. The problem with a Canva document is that there are so many options in terms of design that I end up with a problem with the reading order. If you look at a typical word processing document, you see the, the design, the layout is pretty simple. You've got this reading order here. First, it's going to read the title, then the subtitle, then this text, and then this, and then the image, and then so on. And it, it's, it, it's very linear. And so a screen reader will read that most likely in order. But in Canva, I have a new situation because screen readers read across and down, just like you'd read a book. So first it's gonna read this and then this, which I, of course I'd mark that as decorative, and then this and then this, and that reading order is not what I want. So that is a problem, but I can fix that with Adobe Acrobat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and download this as a PDF standard. Okay, so I pull all of my PDFs through Adobe Acrobat, even ones I've downloaded from other places other than Canva, just to make sure that it's you know working properly. I'm gonna show you what I do. So I'm gonna open up my file, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go to View More and pull up this Prepare for Accessibility. These are the accessibility tools that I have. I first wanna check and make sure it has been tagged. So these tags are just basically how this document is kind of formatted. It is not something I fully understand. I would not recommend messing with this. So you've seen it, you've confirmed it's there, you're good. If this is blank, then you'll need to choose auto tag document and let Adobe add the tags and then this will populate and then you will just close it and never look at it again. Although it is very useful. Um, if you can learn about that, it can help you further in accessibility, but it, it's over my head for right now. Okay, then I'm going to choose reading order. And then from here, I can either choose show order panel or I can just pull up, click the zigzag and pull it up right here. So this is my reading order of how these things are going to be announced. And you can see actually it's, it's very out of order. And so you can drag things into the proper order by um, selecting them and pressing down and then dragging up or down. So that's how you reorder it. So I want to reorder that. Okay. Now something else is you'll notice that this is the title of my book. It should not be paragraph text. So you can change it by just clicking on that and choosing over here. Uh, that's the title. So that's going to be my heading one and I can remark it. And so this how to guide, this is going to be heading two. And then I have this image, okay? And you can notice I um, had also in Canva already removed these background items. So I did that so I wouldn't have to mess with that again once I got here. Okay, now I have noticed uh, something else that's a problem. It's marked heading one. It has actually included my name as part of that. And I don't, I don't want my name. That's two separate things. So then you do that and mark that. That's just gonna be text. And so it does separate it out and that's kind of nice. And so I'm going to go ahead and move my name down here. It is important to note that once you delete something, there's no way to get it back unless you know how to edit these tags. 
So be very careful about deleting. What I do is I save every now and then, and that way if I make an error, I can just go back to my latest saved copy and start over. Messing with the tags just has not brought me good luck, so I just don't do it. Um, okay, let's move on to page two. You can see, oh, okay, I want this up here. And I also want this combined actually into one statement as a heading two. And then I will keep that and then I will go on. So then once you've set up your reading order and you've re-tagged your headings and all of that, you're going to set your alternate text and it will say okay. And then it will show you, it'll highlight every single figure that you still have in your reading order and you can add your alt text. And then when you've done all that, you just save and close and now all of your alt text is added. And now you're ready to save your document and run it through a screen reader, which I'm gonna show you next. So now I'll launch NVDA. Welcome to NVDA recording region indicator window. It will immediately start talking to you. Tap volume control so you're window. You're going to want to mute that. And then you'll right click this little icon down here, choose tools, speech viewer. And so now we know what is being announced without listening to the voice. So now I'll open my file. I'm going to move this right over here. Okay. And so it's telling me it is a how to guide. And you'll notice it's announcing that the headings and I know this is if you've never done this before, this looks like a total crazy mess here. Um, and it looks like I do have some errors, but I'm not actually going to go into that with you right now. There's one thing I wanted to show you and it's right here. And so you'll notice this has not been marked as a list. So you can see down here because if it was, it would say list of what 10 items and it didn't, it's just jumping right into the content. That's because these Canva markers did not show up as a list. And the only way to fix that is to learn how to change those tags to a list tag. And I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so anyway, but that's not a horrible thing. This document is still very accessible. So that's how you test it out. Um, you could also listen to the voice if you wanted to go through it and see what it's really like for a screen reader person to go through it and hear that voice. They actually typically speed it up to make it a little bit easier. But anyway, hope this helped. Don't forget to check out the resources down below in the description. Of course, like the video and subscribe to my channel. That's obvious. I don't even know why people have to say that, but you know, here I am saying it. Thanks for watching. Bye.